So we are at MRC Fabrication here in Kernersville, North Carolina, where my Cadillac, 1961 Coupe de Ville, has been hiding for about the last six months. And I want to show it to you right now. There it is. So I brought this car here, I don't know, about six months ago, and it was a bone stock 61 Cadillac Coupe de Ville with zero rust. And when I say zero rust, I mean you, lift, you lifted up everything in this car. There was nothing, not even surface rust. And it only had about 46,000 miles on it. And so you can imagine the horror of people on the internet when we lifted the body off the chassis and just cut the entire floor out of the car. They were mad. And eventually they came around when they saw the new stance. And uh, this was kind of like this vision I had for building a legit eight second luxury street car that I could put all my friends and family in, drive around, go run an eight at the track and then go cruise the boulevard with. And um, this is a good start. I brought it here because my friend Jimmy makes an amazing chassis and suspension system. And they're really quick at what they do. In fact. Day one, we had the body off, the floor cut out, and half of the chassis built. And within three days, it was sitting on the ground like you see with the rollers and the rear end in it. And so I live about six hours away. I come up here every few weeks. We work on it for two or three days, make some progress. Then I go back home, upload a video to YouTube, and then come back and do it all over again. And this trip is the one where I get to bring it back to my house. So by the time I leave here, it'll have floors, a roll cage, suspension, drivetrain mocked up and I'll get to take it home and wire it and plumb it and build a turbo kit and do all the fun stuff that I'm capable of, which is not building a chassis that looks like this one. What are the features? So the goal for the car is to finish it hopefully by September and run an endurance drag racing event like Hot Rod Drag Week or Rocky Mountain Race Week, something where drive from drag strip to drag strip every day, make passes, go to the next one, and uh, basically prove you have a real street car. You know, instead of just racing all weekend at one track, you drive a thousand miles and race at five tracks. And then most of those events you win by having a really low average. Um, this car, I'm not building for anybody but me, so it doesn't fit any class. Um, and so I'm building it with enough safety equipment to run 850s legally and I'm gonna put enough horsepower in it where I think it'll do it. And it will not set the world on fire and win a championship at anything, but it'll make me happy to have a barge like this that runs eights, that still has the back seat, still has the air conditioning, still carries my family and friends around and just looks cool. Yeah. So this makes me happy. So this has not been certified yet, but this is essentially an overbuilt 850 sportsman roll cage. And so, we built it with the frame and we built it with the frame in mind where it would have about a six inch ride height and we'd still have room to put the back seat in here and fit a 32 inch tire and from the outside looking in other than the bars this will have the full interior it'll have the stock steering wheel it will look like a cadillac but it'll have enough structure and safety to it that I'll, I'll feel good about running eights in the quarter mile. Um, the stock X frame made this car handle like you would not believe. It was like kind of riding on a waterbed down a highway. You just kind of floated. You couldn't, you couldn't really feel anything and you don't want to try to go fast and something like that. So MRC Fab built this mandrel bent chassis and then the cage really stiffened everything up. I don't know if we saved any weight. We might've because the X frame is really heavy. Um, but by the time you add the cage back into it, you know, we still might be around 4,700 pounds, which is what this car weighed stock. Um, so we're going to need a lot of horsepower to run eights and something this heavy. So the knee bar bends around the column. Um, the front down bars clear not just the dash, but the AC vents and the door panel. And it's, it's really, it really highlights how good they are here because I was here the day this got built. 
And this bar was made the first attempt, and it cleared here, here, and the door panel's off right now, but it cleared the armrest without touching anything, without wasting any tube. And a gentleman named Gene did that, and it was incredible to watch him do it. Um, no computer software, just, you know, some measuring tools and a protractor, and he nailed it. I feel like horsepower is cheaper than carbon fiber. All right, so what you're looking at here is the original engine out of the roadkill ramp truck. So that's a 73-ish Chevy 454 that uh, will not set the world on fire, but it does give us enough parts and pieces to mock up engine mounts, transmission mounts, stuff like that. So the engine is going to be a Nelson Racing Engines twin turbo big box Chevy. We're going to run it on alcohol at the racetrack without an intercooler, again, trying to save weight. On the street, it'll run on pump gas. And uh, it'll be Holly EFI controlling the ignition and the fueling. Uh, mirror image tur turbos by Nelson. He's going to build the long block. And then we'll have the long block shipped to my house. And we'll build the headers, the turbo kit, the hot side, the cold side, cooling system, plumbing, wiring, the whole thing. We'll build all that in my garage, uh, well, which is my basement, to be honest with you but uh, we'll do all that at my house. I don't know, so we've talked, we've gone back and forth about whether or not to make the front suspension adjustable. Um, part of me wants to do it because after we run eights in the quarter, I'd like to see if this thing would go 200 in like a standing mile event or something like that. And to do that, I'd like the car lower, but the weight penalty of going to a Mittler Brothers Hydroshock in a drag application um, is something that I'm kind of like, ah, the car's already really heavy. Um, and anytime you have weight and mass and you're trying to whole shot it, that's when you start blowing up driveline components. And so I think we'll try to do it on coilovers first. And if we end up having to lower the car at that point, we'll put an adjustable suspension in there like the Hydroshocks. Um, the back of the car really can't go much lower because the tires are already up into the trunk hinges. And uh, we could move those in and lower the car another inch or two. But uh, the front can go down a lot. We're, we've got four inches of clearance between the tire and the fender. Uh, I think the car's been repainted. If it hasn't been repainted, the quarter panels have been worked on. But um, this is the stock unaltered body. And I'd like to keep it that way. I, we're definitely not going to paint the car anytime soon. And, uh, and I'm not going to alter the way the body looks. I just like the stock look with the big wheels. I'll just kind of pivot it like that then. So that's a quick performance nine inch rear with an oversized case. It'll actually fit a 10 inch ring gear. Um, it's got a back brace, full floating axles, 40 spine, all the good stuff. Um, we're gonna start out with I think a 350 gear in there. And uh, those are 32 inch Mickey Thompsons that are I think 15 inches wide if I remember off the top of my head. So we're going to try to keep the stock trunk floor. I'll build our own gas tank uh, that'll go under the floor, just like the stock one was. And uh, again, because I want this to be a street car, I want the trunk room. So instead of punching a big hole in the floor and just sticking you know, a square fuel cell in there that you can buy, it's cheap and easy, we'll do the difficult move of building our own fuel cell. Uh, the other reason we're going to do it is we're going to run two types of fuel in the car. So we'll have a section of the fuel cell that'll hold about four gallons, maybe five. That'll just be alcohol. That's what we'll use at the drag strip. And then we'll have a section that's about 10 or 12 gallons that'll hold pump gas for driving around on the street. So you can't just buy that at Summit. You have to actually build that. Yeah, this is really, really trick. Um, and uh, I needed two parachutes to stop the car. Um, according to NHRA rules, once you hit 150 miles an hour, you need a parachute, but when the car is this heavy, you need two. So Motion Raceworks sent me the chutes and the air launchers, and then the guys here at MRC Fab um, fab the trailer hitch and the rear bumper mount to integrate everything. So when you're not at the track, hitch up your boat or your jet skis and whatever and go cruising. When you are at the track, you slide this in, 
long bolt will go through here and the lanyards for the parachutes, one will go there, one will go there with a single bolt through it. So when the chutes launch, this is your pickup point. This is what's pulling backwards on the car. And this came out really close to being where the crankshaft center line of the motor is, which is where you want to pull from. And it's perfect. It's right where the license plate would have gone. So didn't have to cut up anything. Like all the Cadillac people at home can chill out because we're not butchering the car, I promise. <laughs> I'm going to keep the bumpers, I'm going to keep the stock glass, the stock sheet metal, like we're not going to alter the way the car looks, other than the stance and the wheels and the tires. Yeah, so that's my caddy. Can't wait to drive it. Got a lot of work to do ahead of it, but I'm looking forward to, to doing that. And uh, if you want to see more about this, you can go over to YouTube, look for Finnegan's Garage. We already have four or five videos on cutting this thing up here at MRC Fab, and we'll have even more videos once it gets home to my basement and we start finishing it and making it run again.